And the main part of membership is the big button here, which is people. People is a screen where you can see members and visitors, households and individuals, both on uh, both or all on the screen at the same time. We have a household side over here to the left and an individual side over here to the right. We can see the individual. We've got specific family information, any kind of comments about the family. We can load a family photo if we would like. Um, and I need, really need to find a family that has more than one person in the household. I've got a lot of visitors here right up front. Well, since I can look at visitors and members separately, oh, I'm set to look at visitors only. Look at that. So let's change over to members. And hopefully, there we go. And hopefully we've got a family here with with a fair number of people in it. Uh, there we go. Let's use this one. So um, we've got the individual inf information here on the right. You see I've got Evan Bernard highlighted, and here's all his information. As I click on each name, you'll see it switches to that individual's information. And you can customize this information. You control what appears on the screen, uh, in what order it appears and for these drop down menus like status code or family relation you can customize these and track only the family relations that there are the statuses that you would like to track so it's very flexible very customizable we can also see what groups and classes a person is a part of uh, what skills or interests he or she might have uh, any kind of alternate address information. This is really helpful for uh, what we here in Ohio call snowbirds, uh, people who head to warmer climates for for uh, winter times to avoid snow and ice and other, other cold things. Uh, also very helpful for college students. Maybe Stuart Bernard here might be one of those. Uh, he's gone for part of the year, let's say, so we can make sure any kind of postal mailings go to the correct address for that time of the year. We can post comments about the individual, and also we could load an individual photo if we would like. Now, everybody here in my sample household happens to have the same last name, but Church Windows will absolutely handle um, fam blended families with multiple last names or hyphenated last names, any and all of that. Any family configuration you've got, Church Windows can absolutely handle it. And I did mention earlier that we can view both members and visitors on this screen, so it's completely flexible. And one other really nice part is if anybody ever needs to go to visit them, you can actually get an, a map and driving directions directly to their house right from this screen. Um, you'll notice in Church Windows there's, there are headings across the top, and as I click on each heading, you get a different set of buttons below. And I'm just going to kind of go through this heading one at a time. We just talked about people. Find is, well, we're doing a find for, for people. Uh, visits is something else we should talk about. Visits, we're talking about individuals or groups from within the church who go out to visit those in need of visiting. So when I go to add a new visit, I tell the system who received the visit and the reason for the visit. We're going to call this a hospital visit. Who did the visiting? And these are all customizable. You can choose exactly who would be doing the visiting. Let's say it was a deacon. And the location of the visit. Well, it's a hospital visit, so I'd say the hospital. Um, we can put in the length of the visit. And Church Windows is really smart about how to enter a follow-up date. You can either calculate the, the date, say we'd be back in 17 days. There we go. Or you can just pull down a menu and pick the next date that where you when you said uh, the person might be back. And we can put in comments about the individual or how the visit went. Um, now, the reasons that a person is receiving a visit from a member of the church uh, or from an official of the church, it requires a great deal of discretion on the church's part. We don't just want anybody who can come into the church office, turn on the computer, double click on the little stained glass window icon, come into membership, click on visits, and see why Evan here was receiving a visit. Luckily, Church Windows has a security portion built into it that will not only limit who has access to the program, but to which parts of the program a person has access and also what level of access to those parts of the program. We're going to take a, a quick aside here and go um, 
go look at the security part of Church Windows. But one last thing I want to mention, not necessarily about visits, but about the entire program, the help built into the program. There's this reminder on every screen. So if I am on the visit screen and have some questions, if I press F1, it is immediately going to open up the help file for exactly what I was looking at. It opened it right up for the visits. You see the help files here are nice and visually graphic. They are They've got links that head to other parts. So we can go right to the people file from here. We can do a search at the top. Uh, these drop down menus are really great too. And there's even drop downs and sub drop downs. And you can get right to a subject that you might be interested in, in seeing. But so that the help files are avail readily available throughout the entire, throughout the entire program at any point in time. Okay, let's go talk about that security section and it is over here under the administration area and we go into security and I'm gonna give Miss K Thomas here a password so if she does not need access to visits I can just remove that access uh, maybe she doesn't have anything to do with attendance either we can remove that uh, with membership, maybe we would like for her to be able to uh, see all of the membership information but not add new people or delete people. But let's say she can modify, so she can update addresses as needed. So it's it's completely flexible. Um, a lot of people use security in the donations in the accounting parts as kind of their checks and balances. We're talking about handling the church's money so we, we kind of want to have a checks and balance system with with donations you might you can set up security so that maybe one person does the donation entry and then someone else comes and double checks the totals and does the posting or maybe with accounting one person uh, enters the bills as they arrive someone else later in the month comes in approves them all posts them all and prints them so you can use security to to uh, decide who has access to those tasks. Uh, while we're under the administration area, a couple other things. Um, I didn't mention earlier that there are actually two different ways you can get Church Windows. There's Church Windows Desktop, where you install the software, you maintain the data, everything is in that black box that's parked on top of your desk or maybe stashed in the closet behind you there. And you can use Church Windows Desktop across a network within the church. Um, there's the other way is Church Windows Web, which is our cloud service. With Church Windows Web, all you need is an internet enabled device and an internet connection and everything is safely and securely done uh, from anywhere on just about any type of device. Now with Church Windows Web, a couple of the, there are a few benefits. It, it is a service. It is an ongoing cost, but with that service, you always have access to the support and updates. There's no additional charge for that. Uh, the, they will always install the most recent updates for you, so you never have to worry about that. And also, they will always make a backup, of a short-term backup of your data if you ever need to come back and restore data for something. So Church Windows Web has definitely got a few benefits to it. Now, whether you're on the web or the desktop version, um, you can still make a backup here in the ad, in the administration area, and it's very easy to do. It just takes seconds. We always recommend that you have a few different backups, kind of alternate them. Make sure one is always kept off site. Uh, we don't like to have anything. We don't like to think about anything happening to the church computer, and we definitely don't like to think about ha anything happening to the church building itself. But we do have to have uh, data protection, so you always want to make sure you have backups and. Like I said, with Church Windows Web, some of those are short-term backups are automatically done for you. Okay, let's go back to the membership area. We've got a couple more things to cover. Um, let's look at attendance and attendance entry. This is designed so that you can teach a volunteer in a very short amount of time exactly how to, uh, or yeah, how to enter attendance. I put in the event and the date. Uh, and it will show me everybody who could possibly be a part of that um, of that group or event or class. With a class, it's probably going to be a smaller roster. I picked Sunday morning worship, so we expect everybody to be there, don't we? Um, and you can just quickly just put a check mark in and denote that they're here. If you want to search for someone specific, you just start typing their name. 
uh, and once you hit enter, Church Windows automatically goes to their record and puts a check mark in the box. So we're trying to save, we're saving keystrokes that way, trying to make it a process that you can get through quickly and efficiently. A couple of optional columns to use on this screen. There's the excused column, uh, probably designed, I would think, more for a group in a class than for Sunday morning worship, although I, I, I know a few pastors who probably would like to see a written note uh, if you happen to miss Sunday morning worship. There's also this communion column, very helpful for, let's say, Lutheran churches, where your uh, annual report needs to include those who have given, attended, and communed. So here's where you can track communion. Also under attendance, we are partnered with KidCheck, which is a secure children's check-in service. Um, they are a separate company. This is a separate service that, that does cost money, and but it's very, very helpful for churches who have uh, daycares or church schools. You can know exactly uh, in what classroom a child is at any given time, who is a, who has authorization to pick that child up, and all of those things. And we, we debated writing this part into the program, but Kitchek, they're, they're pros. They are professionals. This is what they do. And so we, we have incorporated them into Church Windows, and they are definitely one of our, one of our great partners. Uh, Groups and groups and skills. We talked about that a little bit on the membership screen, and we can get a number of different reports: a, a birthday list, an anniversary list. Great for bulletin. Uh, great when the monthly bulletin time, uh, monthly newsletter time comes. We can actually send an email to everybody who fits a specific criteria within the program. We can send an email to uh, everybody and say, "Hey." Be sure you bring your Bible to Bible study tomorrow night. Um, and for reports and labels, and also for the email, you can you can get any criteria that is stored within the program. You can create a report, a set of labels, or send an email to people who fit that criteria. Uh, I usually use some ridiculous random example that you would never be asked for to exemplify this. So let's say someone wants you to send an email to... Uh, everyone who is a a full member female born in November who uh, has given in the last six months but not attended in the last six, three weeks you could send them an email they would fit that criteria so and that pretty much covers the membership part of the program 